Hey guys, Sean here from Black Salt Audio, and today I want to take you through a quick mix and show you some of the features from our new plugin, Low Control, and exactly how I'm using it. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are in the DAW. Let's go ahead and listen to this track. This happens to be an orchestral type track that I'm working on currently, and We'll play it once through with low control bypassed, and then again with it engaged, and a third time we'll go back and forth. So let's start with low control out. Here we go. So as you heard in that third example, um, the entire track loses a lot of weight and richness in the low end, and it feels like it loses a lot of its momentum and power um, when low control is bypassed. But when it's in, to my ear, it sounds much more alive and full in that low end and just overall more expensive. So let's now dive into the individual instruments and check out uh, what we're doing here on the drums. Let's start with the drums. So I'm going to start with it out and let's just listen to the track from the chorus here. There we go. And let's hear what uh, what we got going on without low control. So nothing special going on here, it's just a, a kick drum, a snare, and then on the one and four there seems to be some sort of reverse snare uh, coming in. So let's engage low control and listen to it. And now I'll go back and forth just so you can hear. So as you can hear, we're adding a lot more beef and low end sub to our kick. And this would actually be a good time to mention in this particular mix, I've made the decision to put the kick drum below the bass and all the bass elements in this particular track. So if you check out the enhanced frequency here, this slider, I've set it down to 55. Now that's fairly low in the register and that's gonna help bring out a lot of the, the sub power in this kick drum. Whereas if I bring up low control on the bass, you can see in the enhanced frequency section, I've got the slider set to around 80. And that's just gonna help even more separate the kick drum to the bass elements in your mix. But let's go back to the drums to bring up low control. And as they're playing back, I'm just gonna start messing around with some settings to give you a good idea of uh, exactly what you can get out of low control. So let's check it out. So as you heard there, you know, I really pulled down on a threshold to get a lot of gain reduction on this kick. And as the, as I move around the frequency on the compressor, so this is compressing everything below this frequency. So when it was set down to around 90, 
I was compressing everything below that. And when I brought it up to around 200, listen, you can, I'll play it again, but you can hear the room sound or the room tone start to kind of come out in the kick drum um, as the frequency slider of the compress below function here as I move it up. So I'll start it down around 90 where I had it. And as the track's playing, I'll just slowly bring it up. So that's a great feature. It really allows you to dial in the type of kick sound that you're going for. It helps you to really compress the frequencies that you're looking for. And um, then you can use this low gain feature to bring in as much controlled low end as you'd like. So let me set this back to what I had it. I believe it was around 90. I'm just gonna hit play real quick and dial in this threshold. Where I had it, I had it doing about minus three dB of gain reduction, and I'm gonna bring this back down. And of course, we have a, I'm gonna turn this enhance off, but of course, we have this control feature here that we can just turn on and off, and this is just the compressor part of the, the plugin. So let's do a quick before and after of exactly what we're compressing and what we're adding to this signal. So we're just evening out the kick a little bit. We're adding a little bit more low end to it and really controlling that low end so it's a lot more consistent. Um, now let's go ahead and check out what we're doing on the enhanced side. So I'm gonna turn the compressor off for now and let's give this a listen. And as the track's playing back, I'm gonna mess around with the enhanced knob and the frequency slider to give you a good idea of, of what's going on here. As I cranked the enhance knob, we really got a lot of low end out of it, out of the kick drum when the frequency slider was a lot lower. And as I brought it up, you could hear that the harmonic enhancement was moving up in the frequency range. So the higher up you go with this, the better off you're gonna be, let's say if you want your low end elements in your mix to be heard on smaller speakers, that's where this slider comes in handy. So the higher you crank that up, the more you're gonna be able to hear some of that, like if you put it on a bass, uh, the more you're gonna be able to hear that on, on smaller speakers. Now, again, like I mentioned, I wanted my kick a little lower in this track, so I set it around 55 and doing about 10% on this enhanced knob. Now, let's check that out. I'll just do a before and after. Yeah, again, I love what it's doing. It's adding a lot of enhancement and harmonics to those lower sub frequencies. And yeah, let's check out one more time. Let's just do a before and after and check out what low control is doing here. Yeah, so it's adding a lot of weight and a lot of power to the lower sub-frequencies of that kick, and it's really helped driving the track. So love what it's doing on the drums. But now let's check out what we got going on on the bass. So as you can hear, it's just a regular bass sound running through a Sansamp plugin, 
But now let's engage low control and listen to that low end now of the bass come to life. So as you can hear, the bass sounds a lot uh, thicker in the lower mid range. It, it really, it really rounds off those lower mids and gives the the bass a lot of beef and energy and power when low control is in. So I really love what that's doing. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the strings low here. Okay, let's check this out. Let's do a before and after. So a huge difference there in the low end of those strings, and I'm just compressing everything below 90 hertz, and we're only doing about 3 dB of gain reduction at the max. Again, this is an orchestral track, um, so we sort of want those the, the strings to breathe, to ebb and flow a little bit. We don't want to uh, crush them with compression. And then I'm adding about 4 dB of low gain back into the signal, and then just enhancing it around 80 hertz again, uh, trying to keep you know, the strings low with the, uh, similar to the bass and the brass and the synths and everything. I want them all around that 80 hertz range above the kick. Um, so yeah, there's not much going on there. That's pretty much the strings low. Let's check out this brass low, and then I'll show you an example with low control off of the bass, the strings, and the brass uh, in the actual mix. So here's the brass low. Now, I particularly love what low control is doing to the low end of this brass track, so let's do a before and after and check that out. Yeah, just adding a lot of weight and a lot of richness to that low end. I'm just gonna crank up the low gain here so you can hear how much of that controlled low end I'm actually uh, adding to the signal. Here we go. Yeah, so of course that sounded great when I cranked it up, um, but of course there's other elements in this session that have a lot of low end information, so keeping it where I had it around 4 dB is perfect. Um, but now let's go ahead and listen to the whole track, and I'm gonna go ahead and mute low control out of the main bass elements of this track. So let's start with it out, and then as the track plays back, I'll bring it in. Here we go. So as you can hear, when low control's out, the, the mix just sounds really empty. It, it, it's not really alive and it's missing a lot of that low end, but with low control engaged, it's, it sounds great. It's got a lot of rich energy in the low end and it's perfect. So let's move on to the synths now. I'm gonna grab this section here and loop it. Most likely if you're watching this, you're gonna be working within a session that you will have access to all the individual elements. Unfortunately, in this mix, everything was sent to me as stems. So let's just listen to this with low control off and I'll explain why I used low control on these on this synth track. Here we go. Now 
Now let's engage load control. What I'm hearing is I really liked that pulse that the bass synth was doing, but unfortunately there's other, other elements going on. You know, there's a bit of a bell melody playing there, this arpeggio pattern, and this sort of panning reverse sound effect that's going on. Um, so low control worked out great because I only wanted to affect the low end and I only wanted to bring out more of that. So low control is a great plugin for that. Let's do a quick before and after, and then we'll walk through uh, the settings here. Let's go through that one more time, but this time listen, really listen to that low bass pulse. It really, really comes to life when I engage low control and it almost disappears. At least the low end of it completely disappears and it, it doesn't really sound like a bass pulse. It sounds like an upper mid-range sort of uh, pulse. Let's check that out. Yeah, I love what that's doing. Um, let's over exaggerate some of these settings so you can hear um, some of this low, low gain that I added to the signal. Here we go. Yeah, so I love what that's doing. Again, we're pinning it pretty hard, not, not too hard. We're hitting it at about minus three to minus four dB of compression. But again, this is a bass pulse that's driving the track with the kick drum. So I really want that, to, that low end to stay in place. Um, but now let's check out the enhance section. I'm gonna crank this up so you can hear the frequencies that we're enhancing in this bass pulse. Here we go. mess with the frequency. You know, I actually like it up there at the 160 hertz. I think it still has enough low end. Um, but we're getting a little bit more punch out of it and it's going to translate a lot better onto smaller speakers. So let's actually hear that in the context of the entire mix now that we've, we've made those changes. So I'll start with it out and then as the song plays back, I'll bypass it in and out. The bass pulse in this synth track is almost non-existent when, when low control is bypassed. I can't really hear it. It doesn't have much of a pulse. I mean, it's there, but there's no real thump or feeling to it. So again, I love what low control is doing to these synths. So that's pretty much every instrument I've had it on. Let's go through and just one last time listen to the entire mix with low control bypassed. And as it plays back, we can engage it. Let's check that out.
And there you have it. That's how simple it is to dial in some nice, rich, beefy, thick low end into your mixes using just one plugin. Now, we are offering a free 14 day trial to this plugin. So, if you were interested in trying out low control, you can simply head to blacksaltaudio.com forward slash low control and check it out today. Take care.